Good morning, everyone. Today we'll start the first lecture on module number five uh, about multiple sequence alignment. Uh, today, lecture number one uh, about building a multiple sequence alignment. We'll talk about uh, uh, many things uh, about many useful why multiple sequence alignment is useful for scientists. Identify situation where multiple sequence alignment don't help, and main criteria of for building a multiple sequence alignment. Um, of course, we'll go through main applications uh, of multiple sequence alignment. This is very important. And also, what kind of sequence uh, you are looking for in your alignment. And tips for naming sequences, tips for uh, difficult uh, multiple sequence alignment to inter interpret, and comparing sequences that uh, you can't align. Uh, and also in this coming lecture, we'll go uh, through uh, many things uh, and uh, the outcomes of that, that we will learn how to use some uh, um, tools uh, for multiple sequence alignment, very useful tools such as cluster W, which everybody like to use it, and uh, uh, muscle, uh, which is very fast, and tea coffee, and we'll know the uh, differences between uh, different tools and why we should use one tool over the others on uh, what is the situation that this is useful and this is not useful. Um, building multiple sequence alignment. It's, it's for biologists, uh, you have to use all your uh, information about bioinformatics and, uh, and biology. And uh, when you are using bio, uh, sequence, sequ multiple sequence alignment tools, because uh, really it's like a Swiss knife uh, for MacGyver, but you can do many things with it. So that's why you, ha you can extract a lot of information and you have to know what kind of information and why you do multiple sequence alignment and what you are looking for in your sequence alignment. Sometimes uh, multiple sequence alignment don't really help. Uh, simply uh, when you, uh, for example, assembling sequences for uh, in assembling sequence project or building a ST cluster or when you have no homologue for your genes. So in this, in this case, multiple sequence alignment really don't help. So, uh, but of course, there is other solution for that. Uh, for building an informative multiple sequence alignment, these are the steps that you are going through. First, you have to gather your sequence. Uh, then, you have to compute a multiple sequence alignment. In this case, you have to find a good program to do that. After building your multiple sequence alignment, you have to evaluate your sequence, uh, the quality of your alignment, and then interpretation stage, and uh, in the end, uh, you have to keep your sequences in a safe place so you can come back again and use it or to do further analysis on your sequences. So what you are looking for in your multiple sequence alignment, there are four criteria usually scientists look uh, for. Uh, the first criteria is uh, structure similarity. So you are looking for structure superposition that mean that you are looking for places uh, that are uh, for example uh, have the same amino acid the same nucleotides so there is structure uh, similarity and of course these positions have to have structure meaning uh, the second is evolutionary similarity this means that you looking for uh, a common ancestor. So you're looking for homology. Uh, so and then this homology will lead to a common uh, ancestor. Uh, this is uh, the evolutionary similarity. The third uh, main criteria is functional similarity, and, and there is no uh, special automatic program that uh, that you can uh, for, for for finding functional similarity, but uh, there is. We are looking for amino acids uh, sequences or nucleotide sequences that have uh, a meaning or have a, a, a functional meaning. So that's why this is the third uh, uh, main purpose 
for making multiple sequence alignments. The fourth is sequence similarity. Of course, if all the the last three, uh, the the one number one and number two and number three uh, main criteria actually depending on the sequence similarity. So that's why if we have a sequence similarity, this will mean structural and evolutionary and functional similarity. So this all of them sometimes means uh, means sequence similarity. So this is the these are the main criteria for uh, uh, building a multiple sequence uh, alignment the main application uh, for uh, multiple sequence alignment for example number one is extrapolation uh, extrapolation uh, uncharacterized for example protein sequence is really a member of a protein family so we want to know if this sequence is uh, for or your sequence is a member of a protein family or or whatever so in this 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 the meaning of extrapolation and there is a very good tool for that which is uh, 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 plus uh, and and here is the link for that embedded link so you can use it for example or scientists use that for uh, extrapolation this is the main uh, one of the first uh, main application uh, of uh, multiple sequence alignment. The second main application is phylogenetic analysis. Uh, in this case, we reconstruct the history of of, of, of proteins or DNAs. So or in this, we would like to find uh, a choose sequence and find uh, a phylogenetic uh, relationship between other sequences. And there is many tools that are available nowadays for this purpose and uh, for example philip is one of the program and here's the link you can you can use it to uh, uh, use it to build uh, or make phylogenetic uh, analysis uh, pattern identification also is one of the main application multiple sequence alignment and uh, it help in uh, identification uh, of uh, a region of characterized function function so uh, if you know uh, what function this region is uh, is doing so it's very simple to uh, identify regions in your sequence that uh, characterized with uh, a function so this is called pattern identification and also it's uh, one of the main application of multiple sequence alignment and domain identification is, is, is not uh, uh, very different but it uh, it's also uh, one of the uh, of, of the main purposes main application uh, so you can find a protein domain in a protein family for example and uh, there is a link for that and uh, on website that like for example Prosite, Prosite, it's uh, an Xpasi uh, website you can find, uh, and it's one of the tools that uses multiple sequence alignment to uh, extract uh, information about domain identification. Uh, also, uh, to find an uh, DNA regulatory elements in this case, uh, you, for example, binding site, uh, or DNA binding site, or protein binding site uh, in the DNA, whatever. So uh, there is uh, many tools that for use uh, help for that. Like for example, Gibbs sampler. Also, it it based on the use of multiple sequence alignment to extract this information. So uh, this very helpful also. Uh, structure prediction uh, also one of the main application uh, in this case you can if you have a good uh, multiple sequence alignment you can extract a good information about the the, the protein secondary structure and then the third the tertiary structure and the three you can build a 3d model build based on uh, multiple uh, sequence uh, alignment uh, ns snap uh, analysis and uh, this is a very uh, good application to predict whether non synonymous single nucleotide polymorphism is likely to be harmful or not. And, and this is very uh, important and uh, to know if this uh, non synonymous single nucleotide polymorphism, as we said, is it harmful, is it will make a big difference in the protein or not. And there is a program uh, uh, for many software that based on this I, that idea like SIFT, S-I-F-T and, uh, and here is the embedded link and here is the, the, uh, how it looks like uh, 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 the first interface. So all that application 
as different application and of course we have to include PCR analysis uh, in that and it's, it's also based on the multiple sequence uh, alignment and and that's why uh, we uh, we can use that in many uh, applications uh, but you have to bear something in your mind uh, first of all that is amino acid or nucleotide are not allowed to mutate important amino acid and uh, or uh, sequences uh, or nucleotides are not allowed to mutate this means that uh, active sites of enzymes are always much conserved uh, uh, so when you look at a conserved region in a protein sequences or uh, a DNA sequences you have to know this is very important region and that's why you will not find a lot of mutation uh, in that conserved region and also you have to bear in mind that less important residue change more easily so that's why when you look at the multiple sequence alignment and you see uh, some parts of the multiple alignment is not uh, is really uh, changed a lot there is many changes in that regions especially in the extremities you have to know that this is a less important region in the alignment so usually the most important region as we said is is conserved much conserved and the most uh, less important are always not uh, conserved okay now uh, we'll go through uh, tips of naming sequences of course never use white spaces not use special symbols don't use very big names like 15 characters uh, and of course never give the same name for uh, two different sequences this is very important all these uh, mistakes a lot of scientists uh, do it so uh, and that's why this can spoil your alignment so this you have to remove uh, insertion and deletion for example redo multiple sequence alignment if you if you don't uh, if, if you don't get uh, any result and you all always try to keep trimming your muscle sequence alignment uh, try to keep trimming them so you will get uh, what you're looking for and this are uh, the, the main three steps for enhancing your alignment when you're making alignment you have to remove the gaps uh, remove extremities and keep your own informative uh, blocks so these informative blocks you will build information on that informative blocks but anyway this depends on what you are looking for and of course depend on uh, what you want to do with multiple sequence alignment as we will see uh, in the next uh, lectures of course you can practice here i put uh, some more slides just for you to uh, if you want to practice uh, in your own time uh, and know the differences between uh, different uh, application and this practical uh, also you can try it on your own time uh, and uh, and so you can uh, do that uh, just to uh, uh, put hand on uh, on how to extract information and how to uh, build a multiple sequence alignment uh, on that I hope you can follow all the other lectures so uh, this is lecture number uh, one